Hello, welcome to session four. And today we're going to be focusing on learning, another part of our five ways to well-being. But before we start that, I want to just take a moment to just sit within that mindfulness relaxation to get you in the right place for the course today. So if you could just take a nice comfortable seat, wherever that might be. And if you can just start by noticing your breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. In through your nose and out through your mouth. One more in through your nose and out through your mouth. And if it feels comfortable, just to close your eyes, feel free to do so. And if it's more comfortable for you to keep your eyes open, then that's also okay. I want you to think about your feet on the floor and allow them to feel like they are stronger, that they're feeling some sense of connection with the floor beneath you so that you can feel more grounded in the spot that you're sat in right now. I want you to imagine a sweep up from your feet up to your back and I want you just to think about how you're sat at the moment. Do you need to lean back a little or do you feel comfortable sat exactly as you are? I want you to take a little minute to think about appreciation of your senses and the one we're going to focus on right now is to think about the food that we eat every day. So whilst you take that moment of peaceful relaxation, I want you to think about a more mindful way of thinking about your next meal. Think about making that meal as you would for a friend. Think about what you might put into that to show a little bit more care for yourself. I want you to think about the taste you might add or the time you might take to make that happen. And then imagine yourself once you've made that meal, just taking some time where you're not in front of the TV eating, but you're going to just spend the time maybe looking out of the window or just a moment to give yourself a little bit more awareness of each taste that you're having. See if you can allow yourself a day with more mindful eating today. And with a couple more moments to think about that. I want you to think about your where you're sat on the sofa and just start to move just slightly and your feet on the floor and to bring yourself back into the physical body, noticing your breathing. And then when you're feeling more able to do, just flutter your eyelids open and come back. We'll start with our session today, which is all about learning. Thank you. So yeah, I like to believe that we actually, we continue learning throughout our lives. This isn't just something that we do as children. We're not just put in a school, we get educated and then there's a full stop. That's not happened for me. I don't think that's happened for anybody. I think it is a continual, continual thing, but obviously we have the advantage as an adult because we can choose what we want to learn, which is fantastic. Um, and learning can obviously be found in so many different places. You know, we've talked before, I know about our different community groups that we run at Bath Mind, um, but also, you know, reading, podcasts, um, radio mm. programs, huge source of information, um, TV, vocational courses. And I know we've obviously spoken about voluntary work before as well, and what we can learn by doing that as well. Um, mm. In our home area, in, in, in and around Bath, you know, Bath and North East Somerset, we've got lots of different um, charities and um, organisations where you can do courses, groups, evening classes, college. Um, there's just a host, a whole host of different resources out there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in recent months, people have been learning new activities. Some people have been at bit home a bit more than maybe they normally would be. And for some people that's created an opportunity to learn a new hobby or a new skill. Mm. Not everybody, it doesn't matter if you haven't, it's not there for everyone to have done that. But obviously, 
I've just seen online a whole host of people, friends taking up new hobbies and sharing photos of what they've been doing, which is great. It's really inspirational. Um, so a list here of some different ideas or things um, to learn as sewing, knitting, art, you know, it could be sketching, painting, learning to play a musical instrument, um, cooking, baking. I know when you were talking earlier about that and being mindful of, of food, I was really yeah, taking my mind to a roast dinner. <laughs> so I need to learn some, maybe some new recipes actually. Mm. Crafting, dance and, and movement, um, you know, exercise classes, that's learning, isn't it? Whether it's um, tennis or yoga, what, what, whatever. Um, and researching things as well. I mean, we're not too old to study if we wanted to go back down that academic route as well. I know that's something I've done as an adult out of choice, which is great. And yeah, just sort of looking at a list, I'm thinking of things that I'd like to learn in the future, because just because I haven't done it in recent months or years doesn't mean mm -hmm. I can't now. And yeah, I've always been quite tempted by the idea of learning pottery, actually. I haven't done it before. Mm -hmm. but I just think it looks like it would be something I would enjoy, you know, that feel of like clay and making something um, out of enjoyment. I'm not saying I'd be any good at it necessarily, and maybe that's not the point of it. It's just trying something new mm. Jeanette, is there anything you'd particularly like to learn do you think well I, I always like to see what's on locally and around and sometimes it's just taking in you know there might be a something on the well-being college website or from creativity works or one of the colleges Bath University or or City of Bath there's there's so much on and around at the moment and then on social media I often find there might be a link to us you know it might just be um just watching something about you know something that I'm interested in um and I, I'm the, the work we do means that you're always looking to improve your your continuing development Mm -hmm. So I'm often looking at things that might help the work that I do within Bath Mind. So um, some of those lovely little online courses. I know that something I did um, over over the period of where we were not able to be as free to move around was um, I did an online dog behavioural course oh, yeah. and I just found it really interesting not mm -hmm. not because I'm going to be a dog behaviorist but I was really interested to learn a bit more about you know what makes my own pets kind of tick and I found that really really interesting um and often I I'll go down a hole of see if I can find out more information. Um, I don't play a musical instrument, not since I played the recorder at school, but I've got a lot of admiration for people who can. Um, so I do love music, particularly, you know, really good guitar music. Um, and I do love other people's baking. I'm not a big baker, but I don't think you have to be perfect at things to to try them or learn them. I don't know about you, Ros, but at school, I had a very creative artistic friend and it almost made me think maybe I'm not good enough. Mm. But as an adult, I've definitely learned that it's okay to do things because they feel good, mm. not because you're going to display them. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I do is I, I write poetry, not, not for everybody else, sometimes just for myself. Um, I find that's a really nice way to express my myself. It doesn't have to be about the craft, doesn't it? It doesn't need to be critiqued by anyone. It doesn't need to be shared, but just the act of doing, no, doing anything no. more than once and getting into a habit is where the learning mm. comes in. And it might not even about be about learning the activity, but learning how to structure that into your time. It's a, it's a skill in its own self, I think. And I like to invite the people. Sorry, Roz, carry mm. on. Yeah. I was going to say also like relearning things as well, potentially um, activities that we might have enjoyed as children. And as adults, we've just let go of them. We've not maybe been able to continue, maybe because of where we live, 
finances, time, whatever, but actually, mm-hmm. you know, what were we, we passionate about? What did we enjoy when we were children? And is that something we can tap into now as adults? Mm. And I think the thing for me is, is I want to invite people to, you know, the people doing this course to think about what they would like to learn more about. Maybe they didn't have time before to do that. Maybe they've got something they've always wanted to start. But if they haven't, it might be a nice idea just to brainstorm different ideas. You know, we've given quite a few today. But if you can brainstorm them and then maybe put them in an order, like one, two, three, and then decide which one is the most achievable to pursue. What if you, once you've found that one, you're going to kind of break down a bit further. What steps would you need to take in order to make that happen. So it could be as, as, as small as doing a little bit of research. Because I sometimes think when people think they've got to learn something new, they have to go from naught to 60, but you don't. Um, just make the steps more achievable and start small. And I think if you could look at your, your plan and your pack just to start using that, use that whole sheet, just to start breaking down some ideas for something new you might like to do. And it doesn't have something practical it might be just about learning more about yourself um so that can mean you know just really getting to know yourself a bit more it might be something with in terms of a self-help book or or a plan or it might just be getting to know maybe the deeper side of you the bit that's not just on the the surface the everyday part and uh, one way you can do that is is to think of maybe three words that you might use to describe yourself. Yeah, and there's an interesting exercise that you can do where you actually think about somebody else who you admire mm. for every reason, yeah. and write down three things about that person that you like or you admire. And it's quite interesting because sometimes those three things are the same, you know, about yourself. Good, you know quality yeah I, I often, when you've got those role models or sometimes you have them on a pedestal and you feel like it's unachievable but I think mm. once you start like you say to break that down there's a reason why we do admire people um I know that I've got some people in mind when I think about who I admire do you do you have anyone in mind yourself mm-hmm. yeah I guess there's I mean I've got a family of friends um who they're not local to me but we're in touch quite a lot and they're the kindest like family I know Mm -hmm. they're always out and about doing people um favors you know giving a lift to somewhere offering something and really supportive and you think wow what an amazing you know way of giving to people and I really admire them for that um and famous people as well sometimes. I mean, even, you know, the climate activist Greta Thunberg, like, I mean, I think she's incredibly brave, you know, a young, young woman being the spokesman for world, you know, issue is just incredible. Mm. What about you? Mm. Well, I think I've, all my life, I've had certain people that I think stand out and uh, I kind of sort of almost see it like a collection of people. Um, in mine and they are if I'm honest they are often women um and they're often women who are quite patient or quite strong um resilient um not it's not always for me a talent it's definitely about how somebody can um be really real and honest uh when I was doing my counselor training it was actually a a, a man Erwin Yalom and he is a gentleman who talks about being a therapist but he does it and he talks about the mistakes he's made Mm. and it allowed me to feel like do you know what I might not be I might not I might not be perfect but I am working towards doing my very best at what I'm trying to do. And he saw um, his failures as his biggest learning. Um, And he sort of enabled me to be able to think, you know, maybe um, that's okay. Maybe it's okay to, you know, fall a few times to be able to be able to, you know, succeed and push through. 
So I think I think I often feel empowered by people who are brave enough to share some of their own story. We talked a little bit before about people with lived experience. Um, and I think, you know, people who've been sort of felt that they've had struggles and then watched them be able to rebuild. Mm -hmm. I think that for me is massively um, inspiring and that that helps me, you know, learn about, you said about connecting those to the words for me. Mm -hmm. And I hope that I can be a little bit like that myself. Yeah, that's great. Something about learning to appreciate, isn't there? Appreciate mm. these values in other people and within ourselves. But I guess on the on the in a broader way, we can appreciate other aspects of life as well. And being grat you know, grateful and feeling gratitude is really good for our well-being. Um, and there's a couple of ways that we can do that. It could be at the beginning of a day, you know, to wake up and think of one one thing that we can be grateful for um it could be the sun rising it could be that we've got electricity in our house you know anything mm -hmm. no matter how big or small um someone i know keeps a gratitude diary and at the end of the day they'll write down three things that day that has happened that they're grateful for it kind of brings awareness i think that's yeah. really really good ros because i think it's really easy to, when someone asks me how my day was, it's really easy to think of the things that were tricky. Mm. And it's really good to get in that positive habit of actually thinking about what was, what was interesting about that day? What did I appreciate about that day? And it can be as small as the postman or the weather or, you know, a warm jumper. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that, process of starting to appreciate what we already have helps us to be more resilient when we've got more challenging times mm -hmm. because if we feel that each day is just challenging it means that we're not necessarily doing that bit where we come out of our our focus and actually look at you know things like the, the roof over my head or or you know a stroke of my pet mm -hmm. or or, you know, just being able to go to the fridge and get some milk out. Mm. Clean water. I think that's a huge thing, isn't it, for us to be grateful for, knowing that, you know, many people around the world don't have that. Um, mm. You know, it's pretty amazing. I think, I think when you talk about, yeah, clean water and hot water as well, mm. you know, I very much appreciate the fact that I have my kettle. Mm -hmm. And it's a very British thing, but um, a cup of tea can definitely make a difference to my day. So have a little think about the kind of things that, you know, the people watching this course might want to learn. Make that plan and, and be brave with that. It won't be necessarily something that, that clicks straight away, but I think that with those sort of steps in mind that... Uh, that you could look at learning something new.